beer culture in Iceland is really young. It's only 30 years since we were allowed to make beer and drink beer again. Between 1915 and 1989, beer was prohibited. Only strong alcohol was allowed, but beer and light wines were prohibited. It started in the beginning of 20th century because of a lot of binge drinking. There was a temperance movement, so they came to the point of forbidding alcohol. But on the 1st of March, 1st of March 1989, 1989. 1989, beer was allowed again. This is a story about beer in Iceland. It's also a story about water in Iceland and why it's so important in beer. But before we can talk about that, we need to learn about the history of beer in Iceland and how it shaped their country. In 1915, a prohibition to outlaw all alcohol in Iceland took place, but the full ban of alcohol didn't last long. But at the time, that was about 1920s, the main export from Iceland was cut and was going to Spain. Then Spaniards say, OK, we are not selling you wines, we are not buying any more fish. So shortly after the prohibition, just Spanish red wine was allowed. I read a story behind that hard liquor was allowed because doctors found a loophole in the system. They started prescribing liquor as you know, a cure for all ailments. Yeah. And the government went, fine. Well, drink your hard stuff with no beer. So why did beer remain illegal to drink? The logic was that if we allow beer that is way cheaper, any normal worker will be drunk during the whole day. So we're going to allow the expensive stuff so just the owner gets drunk. Okay, so Iceland is allowed to drink beer again, but what's next? And what about what I said earlier about water being important in beer? So when I was growing up, the selection wasn't that really big. When you went to another country, you tried the different beer styles, because you mainly got lager in Iceland. You really wanted to uh, drink this style, but the only way to do that was to make it yourself. But then, then around 2006, like the first microbrewery started in Iceland. In that time, like home brewing got really big because it was really easy to get the grain and the, and the hops in the yeast from them. A little tidbit of history, Kaldi, uh, they were the first ones to offer a crafting sort of beer. And they were the ones that inspired a whole generation of homebrewers here. And you know, they are to blame for the people you have right now uh, brewing throughout the country and actually holding a professional position. Aldi Brewery is actually the first microbrewery to open up in Iceland. In the spring of 2005, my mother was watching a story, like a news program on TV, where they were talking about the growing popularities of microbreweries around Europe and in, in, in the US. And she just became fascinated by that story because the importance of water was key in her mind. So she thought, well, there's no microbrewery in Iceland. We have nothing to lose. We have everything to gain. Let's open up the first microbrewery in the country, right here in the middle of nowhere in Iceland. Beer is made out of four core ingredients, water, malt, hops, and yeast. The final composition of beer is about 90% water. So choosing and understanding what's in your source of brewing water is one of the most important steps to brewing a beer. Here's what makes the water in Iceland special compared to anywhere else on earth. The water in Iceland all comes from glacier runoff, which is thousands of years old and becomes naturally filtered through lava fields and its volcanic veins. This makes the water some of the cleanest and freshest sources in the world. But once again, why is that important in beer? The cold water uh, we get just naturally filtered. So that would be the glacial one. And we have the privilege and the luxury to just, just have it on tap. And we never have to worry about any adjustment or manipulation to treat the water. I mean, this is something that breweries around the world can boast. At least 80% of every beer that you drink is water, like as an ingredient of the recipe. You have two different kinds of water. You have soft water and you have hard water. That's regarding acidity or alkalinity. What we have here is kind of the perfect in-between. If you talk about the pH scale, the neutral aspect of the pH scale is about 7.1, 7.2. Our water here is about 7.2, 7.4. So it's extremely neutral. When it's at that point on the pH scale, it's gonna be extremely mineral free. And for beer, I think that's a great thing because that really lets the raw material shine. The differences in water around the world affect the flavor, aroma, and the brewing composition in beer. This is caused by the trace salts, minerals, and elements that naturally occur from the regional source. One of the reasons that Iceland's exceptionally soft water is fantastic for brewing is that it starts as a naturally clean slate to build off of. From here, brewers can add any salts they feel are necessary to the beer they are brewing as well as the style. The water in Iceland is super 
clean, almost too clean to make beer with. It's suitable for like light lagers and light beers, not really hoppy beers, not dark beers. When we make darker beers, we usually add some nutrients to the, to the water to get the right water for the beer. But then again, for example, when I'm brewing a different kind of beer, let's say an English amber ale, I want to get that uh, richer kind of water, like a bit more hard. I'll add natural salts like cal calcium sulfate or uh, gypsum. It's worth mentioning that this is a course from cold water. Iceland has many naturally occurring hot springs due to the geothermal activity below ground. If we're talking the mineral rich sulfury water, we're talking about the geothermally sourced water. So geothermally sourced water is what you might get on tap in a lot of neighborhoods here in Reykjavik. So, you know, you get your hot water, really, really steaming hot water just out of the ground. One downside is it has a very strong sulfury smell. And obviously that's not something you would want to make your beer out of. Uh, yeah. Sulfur will not be great for the yeast, nor for the end consumer. While the geothermal hot springs contain high levels of silicates and sulfur, which make it not safe for consumption, this doesn't stop Iceland from utilizing it to its fullest. We are the first brewery in Iceland that's using uh, like geothermal steam. A lot of breweries that have steam generators to make their steam. We basically just get, just get it straight from the earth into the house. So it comes in at five bars in pressure. That gives you about 150 degrees in Celsius. And we use it to uh, heat up the water and also to uh, boil the wort during the brewing process. When looking over the history of beer in Iceland, it's important to acknowledge the environmental impact in a changing world. The water in Iceland, which all comes from glacial runoff, is just that. A resource frozen in time, and one that is dwindling away. Water isn't just an important ingredient in beer, but a vital ingredient for life.